Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you what's new in WordPress 6.3. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out more WordPress tutorials over on my website, or you can enroll in my WordPress for Beginners 2023 no-code WordPress masterclass on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here I am inside of WordPress. I have already updated to WordPress 6.3 for this site. And then I've also got this site here, which I have still at WordPress 6.2, so we can do some comparisons. I will say because there's been a whirlwind of development over at WordPress, there's been a lot of new changes, a lot of new vernacular, a lot of new UIs being introduced and then reintroduced or reworked. I do cover a lot of things in depth in my course. So if you're totally new to WordPress or if you're totally new to anything WordPress 5.9 or later, I recommend enrolling in that course. But it seems like the two main areas of focus for WordPress in this particular version and probably going forward have to do with the site editor as well as collaboration. So let's go over here to Appearance Editor. The site editor was updated in terms of its overall look and UI in WordPress 6.2. However, they've now taken those changes a step further by introducing this new layout over here. So instead of this saying templates and template parts, now you've got navigation, styles, pages, templates, and patterns. And we're gonna get into patterns a bit more momentarily, but basically they seem to be phasing out template parts and trying to have patterns take over what space template parts took up. Let's just come over here to WordPress 6.2 and go to Appearance Editor. So this is what it used to look like. So now you can edit your site's navigation right here from inside of the site editor, but this is gonna list out your current main navigation and you can click and drag these different items to rearrange them and you'll see they will update over here. Or you can click the edit button and now you're here inside the block editor. This is like the template parts area. You're gonna see that this has changed a little bit up top here. So this is showing your template part you're currently editing. Because it's purple, that means it is basically a global template part. It used to be known as a reusable block. Now they've changed that name. It's going to be a synced pattern. So reusable blocks are now synced patterns. So whenever you make one edit to a synced pattern, it's going to apply that edit across any instance of that pattern. In this case, we have our main menu, which is across all of the pages of our site. So if I make any changes to this synced pattern, it's gonna sync it across all areas of the site that have the menu. So let's come back over here and just click the little icon. This is sometimes the WordPress icon, and we're gonna hit the back button and hit that back button again. So below navigation, you have styles, and you'll remember from WordPress 6.2, that they introduced the ability, I believe it was 6.2, maybe 6.1, they introduced the little styles icon here inside of the top menu, and that just toggled the little style sidebar. Well, now they've also added the styles here inside of the site editor. So now when you click on this, you're going to get a little preview of the available styles, and you can just click on these styles to get a live preview of your site with the new style on there. And you now have this little eye icon here and you'll see it says style book. So when I click on that, you now get a live preview of all of the styles for all of the blocks that are inside this particular style. So you can see what everything looks like. And then you can come over here and just click on that eye once again to get rid of that. So you can also click the edit styles button here and that's gonna take you into the block editor You'll see at the very top here, it'll tell you what page you're editing. And then off to the side here, we still have the sidebar for editing our styles. So you'll see we still have this icon here in the top menu to disable that or enable that. So within the styles area itself, there's been some additional updates. So for example, you now have this little icon for revisions. And when you click on that, it's gonna show you any revisions you have available in your revision history. If you don't have any revisions yet, it's just gonna say reset to defaults. But when you click on revision history, it's going to take you to this sidebar. So you've got this little preview window here, and then you have some live previews of your changes. So you can just click on a change and it'll revert back to what your website looked like at that change. It also tells you who made the change. So this is really the biggest collaboration feature I'm seeing so far in WordPress. If you have multiple people working on the site, it'll tell you exactly who made the change. And then you could see what it looked like before that change or at that change. 
So you can see various changes here in my revision history. So let's say I wanted to go back to before I just applied that style. I can click right here below the most recent entry and come over here and click apply. And you'll get a message here, loading this revision will discard all unsaved changes. Do you want to replace your unsaved changes in the editor? So click discard unsaved changes and now we are reverted back to before I applied that styling. And we can come over here and hit the back button to return to our style sidebar. And let me just show you one more thing about the revision history area. You have this X up here, so if you didn't want to do anything, you can just come over here, click the X, and you will return to the current state of your website. Another new feature for the site editor is that you can now toggle on the distraction-free mode. So if I come over here to this little options icon, you'll see we now have distraction-free. This was made available in previous versions of WordPress, but it was only available outside the site editor. So let me just come over here. I'm in the site editor in this WordPress 6.2 website. If I come over here to the options icon inside the top menu, you'll see there is no distraction free mode inside this site editor. However, if I leave the site editor and let's just go to a random page on the site. If I come over here to my options, you'll see we have the distraction free mode here, but it's just not available inside the site editor. So control shift backslash will take you out of distraction free mode. Let's come back over here to my WordPress 6.3 site and just turn that off. And the last thing I'll mention while we're inside of the site editor is that the preview icon up top here in the top menu has now changed. So now it's going to show you what device you are previewing your website on. Right now it's a desktop. If I change it to tablet, you'll see that'll update. And then mobile, that'll update as well. And of course you still have your view site button. So let's just go back to desktop and come over here and click on the icon again to return back to the site editor. So you can see you have your revisions right here as well. And I also wanna point out at the very top here of the site editor, you now also have this little search icon and it says open command palette. This is similar to the command palette you would find in Inkscape or the search actions feature you would find in GIMP for those of you who use other open source software. Basically, this is going to allow you to quickly find different commands inside of WordPress. So you can see it gives you a couple of suggestions to start with, but let's say I typed new page. Now you've got a quick link here to add a new page to your website. And I'm not gonna click that just yet, but that is a very cool new feature. So I can always just click to get out of there. So you'll also see an icon here for view site. So this just opens your site in a new tab so you can preview your website. So just click out of there. So now we'll click the back button to return to this first page of our site editor. So now you can access the pages of your website from inside of here. So let's say we wanna come over here to the home page. You can see a link to my live home page. This is just a test site. You've got details here for your page and you can also delete your page from here or you can come over here and click the edit icon and that's gonna take you to the home page where you can now edit your home page. And by the way, up top here, you also have that command palette I just showed you. And it also shows you how to access this via the shortcut key. So control K will also bring up that command palette as well as just clicking on here if I didn't say that already. So while we're inside the block editor for this individual page, the home page, let me highlight some of the new features that have been added here. So right now we're inside of the style sidebar. Let me first just change that over to the settings sidebar. And I'm gonna come over here and go into the block tab. So if I select a block, it'll bring up the settings for that block. This block right here happens to be a cover block and there have been some new features introduced for the cover block. So if I come over here to the styles tab, you'll now see this new option to edit the global text settings for all of the text inside this block. Right now these each have individual settings, but if I change this, let's just go with this color here. And for example, we'll just click on this text box here and change this, we'll just uncheck that. So now you'll see the global settings will update for that. And let's just click back on select cover and go back to styles. So if I scroll down, you're also now gonna see these new little padding sliders here. And when I hover over them, you're gonna get a preview of what the padding and margin is gonna look like. 
And you also now get this little border slider so I can add a border to the block. And I can always come over here and unlink the sides. And then we can set settings for individual sides. So let's just delete these. So if you wanted just a bottom border on that block, now you have it. So let's come back over here and just click reset. So another new feature is that you can unpin this toolbar and when you do that, instead of it appearing under here as a second line under the top menu, it now actually is just gonna go directly inside the top menu. So just a new layout there. You can access that by clicking on options and then click top toolbar. So there you'll see now, instead of it appearing here, it's now inside of here. And let me just demonstrate what this looked like before. So if I click top toolbar, I'm still inside of the site editor here, but you'll see the top toolbar is right here. So I do think this makes a lot more sense and it looks way more sleek. I have noticed during the filming of this tutorial that the performance inside the site editor when you're trying to edit a single page isn't great. So I'd recommend still editing through the usual channel there, which we'll get into in a little bit. So for now, let's just come back to the navigation here and just hit the back button. So you've got all your pages listed here. Let's go back again. So below pages, you've got your templates. And here you can edit the various templates that you can use on different pages of your website. And below that, you now have patterns. So here you can now see all of the patterns for your website, including your own patterns if you've made your own custom patterns. And you'll see this little icon here for synced patterns. And then you've also got some patterns here that come with whatever theme you're using. So I believe in this case, I have the 2022 theme installed for this particular website. And you'll see a little plus icon here where you can create a new template part or create a new pattern. So these two terms are still being used interchangeably when they are very similar in terms of what they do. So I'm not sure if they're gonna eventually just merge those into one thing and just call it all patterns. But for now, you've still got both of these on here. So anyway, let's come back here. And now I'm just going to hit the icon here to return back to the dashboard. So let's come over here to pages. There are a couple of other new things I wanna show you inside the block editor. So let's just edit a different page here. Let's go with the basics page. And I'm just gonna scroll down. They've added a few new blocks to WordPress 6.3. So for example, I've got this paragraph text here. Obviously that's not new, but let's say I wanted to add a footnote to this. So I can click and drag my mouse over the sentence that I wanna add a footnote to. And then in the block toolbar, I can click this little more arrow and then click footnote. And now it's gonna create a new footnote block. And let's just say 10 post. I know that's not how you would actually add a reference, but just for the sake of example, now you'll see we have this little one annotated at the end of the sentence. So let's just say I type something else like this is a fact and then highlight this, and then click that little drop down arrow and click footnote. Now I can add a second footnote here, so just newyorktimes.com, and you can just basically keep doing that and you can rearrange where the footnote block is located. So you can put this at the end of a blog, for example, and you can just come over here and delete this for now if you don't want that there, and it will keep the footnotes. So that's just one new block. A new block introduced with WordPress 6.3 is the details block. So let's click the plus icon here, which is the block inserter. And you'll see it's listed here, or I could type details and click to insert the new details block. So what this block allows you to do is write a summary of text. And then you'll see this little drop down arrow. And then that will reveal even more text below that. So this is gonna be great for things like FAQs or if you simply wanna hide a huge group of text below a shorter summary. Those are just a couple of examples, but let's type, for example, when was the Revolutionary War? And then click down here, the Revolutionary War. So there you'll see I've added a longer paragraph of text below the summary. So now if I come over here and just click to preview this in a new tab, you'll see right here, when was the Revolutionary War? You click that little arrow and now it's going to expand and give you the rest of that text. So that is the new details block. The image block received an update in WordPress 6.3. So that block is now going to allow you to set an aspect ratio for your image. 
So let me just click the options icon here and click add after to add a new block. And I'll type forward slash image and click on the image block. So let's just add an image from our media library and click select. So now over here inside of the settings in the block settings sidebar, you're now going to see a drop down for aspect ratio and you can go with whatever the original image's aspect ratio was or choose for many of these options. So let's go classic three by two. And then you can come down here and change the width of this. So 450, for example. So that's gonna shrink the image down, but maintain this aspect ratio. And let's change this to one to one. So WordPress says the reason for this is that they wanted you to be able to maintain different styling throughout your website for images. So this just allows you to keep things more consistent. So let's return to the WordPress dashboard by clicking on the icon here. And I'm just gonna leave without saving my changes and return to the dashboard. So let's just click learn more to see some of the new features. There's also been 170 plus performance improvements added to WordPress 6.3 and they've incorporated more than 50 accessibility improvements. So people with disabilities who use things like screen reader technologies or can't use a mouse should now be able to design websites in WordPress. And that's obviously great news for tons of reasons, including it just increases the number of people who can use WordPress. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can get more in-depth with WordPress with my WordPress for Beginners 2023 No-Code WordPress Masterclass, which I'll link in the description. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.